declaring the end of the sapiens age. Logically a maximum of two ages are possible. There may be one age that is never-ending or there may be two but there cannot be any more than two and we know there cannot be less than one age of man. Each age represents a different kind of consciousness and each consciousness manifests a different reality. There is no way these two realities can be reconciled. Each reality represents a different race of man. Each race is unique. The two races are forever divided. It is possible to deny the existence of two ages, many do that. People may deny the existence of two different races. The same people deny the existence of two races and two realities and two distinct kinds of consciousness. They believe there is an unending reality inhabited by one race of man. These same persons reject all those of us who do embrace the two reality hypothesis. They alienate us. Sapiens are liberals. Sapient reality is liberal reality, and the liberal world is composed of liberal institutions, such as democracy. The consciousness of a sapient is liberal. There are a few defining features one finds with sapiens. Sapiens think reality is real. In most cases liberals are naive realists even when they subscribe to the latest thinking of physics. Sapiens cannot help but think that underlaying all of the physical anomalies is an objective reality. Sapient reality is physical, and their truth is synthetic. Liberals attempt to reconcile what they experience phenomenologically with what they assume exists independently of the observation. The wisdom of a sapient is tied to and limited by their ability to perceive phenomenon. Thus, liberals are tied to their technology to give them insights into what they say actually exists. This means truth for a liberal is never absolute. They reject metaphysics because metaphysical events cannot be detected by nonsentient technologies. A sunset is not the perception, it is closer to being the technological disturbances registered on gauges and dials. Reality for a sapient is always once removed. Reality in the liberal universe cannot be directly perceived. Liberal truth is contingent, probabilistic, and synthetic. The Christian faithful do not subscribe to the one reality hypothesis or the eon it represents. Because a belief must reject the Weltanschauung of liberals and the idea we are all of one race. Scripture tells us of two fathers and two sets of people. A priori subscribes to the scripturally supported, two-reality hypothesis. A priori acknowledges there is a reality that is relative and probabilistic and cannot be personally known. This is the demonic realm formed by Satan and promoted by his demons. If the realm of Satan could be known fully all of his relative truths would be invalidated. But the church knows the relative truths of liberals are invalid and the lies of Satan are invalidated by God in Scripture. The liberal conception of reality is inherently contradictory and fails on the basis of its own arguments, which are incoherent. If truth is relative, it does not exist. If all truth is relative the claim discredits its premise. The claim, by its terms, cannot be true. Truth must be absolute or be a lie. A relative truth is a half-truth, and a half-truth is a lie. Truth is a priori truth. Truth is deductive, not inductive. Truth is logical and defined by its own terms. It is not possible to measure truth by comparing statements to a mythical objective reality that cannot be observed. Liberals are slaves to the law. Liberals subscribe to the dual law of expediency. The dual law states that might makes right and the end justifies the means. If opinion cannot be backed up by power the law is of no effect. Thus, liberals are slaves to the author of the law, the state, even as they are slaves to the law. Law is opinion formulated into a regulation and backed up by the power of the state or other administrative agency. Human rights for liberals are legal rights. Rights are formulated and regulated by the state. 
Rights in liberal reality are benefits accruing to subjects in recognition of their support for the state. The greatest right the state gives is the right of ownership. But as with everything else, the right to own is always contingent. The state giveth and the state taketh, all powerful is the law of the state. However, the state has nothing to give. What is given must first be taken. This is a dilemma liberals cannot solve. The state is an administrator of property. However, there is not much that is useful to humans in its natural or unprocessed condition. Therefore, human beings must work to produce things of value. The difference in our approach to the situation is what distinguishes the a priorian race from the sapient race. In liberal reality nothing is owned, absolutely. Everything exists for the taking because ownership is always contingent upon the power to obtain or retain possession. The justification for taking possession of assets varies from being the first to see the asset, to writing a social injustice, to the desire to implement a social agenda. The justifications for taking an asset are all rationalizations. We take possession of wealth because we think we have a more valid claim than anyone else, even if the item is in the possession of someone else. War is just one group thinking they have a preemptive claim on the territory inhabited by another group. Because no one owns anything physical, possession is not 90% of the law it is the whole law. But as we learned, law is invalid unless backed up with physical force. The government assigns property to its subjects but the possession is always limited and contingent. This is why the state is able to tax and regulate the property within its borders. Liberalism is closely associated with socialism because the state produces nothing but administrative services. The state is restricted to robbing Peter to pay Paul. But it does this at a cost. War, poverty, unemployment, taxation, inflation, property crime and debt are all the result of the liberal state inserting itself into the affairs of men by means of its liberal institutions. Libertarians and anarchists and conservatives are nascent a priorians because they recognize the predatory activities of the state. But they are either not prepared to separate from the state or they will not give up their sense of entitlement to the things of the earth. There is only one legitimate basis for ownership and that is authorship. We own what we create but we have no claim on anything created by another. Needless to say, no person created anything natural. Regardless of if you believe, God created all physical things. There is no human being that ever lived that produced any of it. Therefore, there is no human being with a valid claim to any part of nature. This includes the geography of the earth. No nation has a right to any part of the planet. However, mankind does create wealth and he owns the wealth he creates. This right to the value we create but not the asset it was created from poses a problem for the sapiens race it has never resolved. If OG picks up a stone and chips out an arrowhead, OG owns the value he has added to the stone, but not the stone. The church is the only organization that has resolved the ownership problem. We must give to God what is God's, but to Caesar that which is Caesar's. We are also told the laborer is worthy of his wages. Scripture requires we credits workers who work in faith for value added to an asset. The asset belongs to God, but the equity belongs to the human creator, the believer. The competing interests of God and believer cannot be resolved without a church built to the specifications set out in Scripture. The Mutualist Believers Association, MBA, holds all things in common. We do not own what we steward, we possess all things in trust. The Mutualist Believers Association is similar to a union because they represent those who create real value in the real world, the people who do works of faith for the people of faith. MBA is a Christian association of trades and occupations organized into 12 sectors. Each sector represents a different occupational category such as transportation, communication, or defense. A Mutualist Association member does not own assets. We own the value we create. 
We use assets to generate value and we are paid for the value we create is determined by the value added by our work for the church. The Mutualists Believers Association is a meritocracy. Position is determined by ability to produce value. A member is a believer who produces value for the chapter. The General Council of the MBA oversees the transfer of resources between sectors and a limited council administrates the resources within a particular trade profile. Plumbers, for example, are part of the same subsector. They are paid for the work they do and are allocated tools needed for the job worked on. If more plumbers are needed labor is transferred from other sectors under less pressure. This way full employment is achieved. Everything is paid for using a unit of account. Payment is by transfers of value. This eliminates inflation and depressions and also cyclic upturns and downturns to the economy. All economic development is achieved by capital transfers. There is no need for taxation or a dictatorial state creating regulations and impacting the economy. Because ownership is not permitted there is no greed or profiteering. Nor are there career politicians living off the public teat. Because all sales and purchases are by the reconciliation of accounts, economic crime is not possible. War is also eliminated and made impossible between member states. 